Married at First Sight Season 16, Episode 3, and After Party were not very eventful in terms of learning much about the cast. Everyone seemed to be on their best behavior for the most part and still in auditioning mode where they're like answering family and friends questions about their intentions and stuff. It's almost like their answers were scripted. When it came to Eris and Jasmine, he is clearly disappointed about all the dogs she has. At first, she said she had four. That threw him off, but it looked like he was trying to figure it out and, you know, trying to rock with her and her four dogs. But later, when she said she's a breeder and has nine puppies, he seemed so grossed out. Like, did I just kiss a woman after 13 dogs licked her face? He was ready to turn her into Dog Protective Services. He was like, 13 dogs? Is that even legal? He's probably like, I know her family is religious and all, but this biblical pageant queen is trying to rebuild Noah's Ark in her apartment. After that, he kind of looked annoyed throughout the reception. I don't know, maybe he just has resting bastard face, but Jasmine, next time, save the 13 dogs conversation for day three at least. Like, 13 is a lot. So we learned that he's an only child that has only child syndrome. I guess that means he's selfish, always wants things his way, and doesn't like to share his toys. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what he means by that. That's the stereotypical definition anyway. In any case, Married at First Sight strikes again, giving Jasmine a husband who has no real relationship experience and only child syndrome. But not to mention, Jasmine let it be known that she has a stubborn side. Plus, his family said he's not a good communicator. Between all of that, they will probably start clashing, and I suspect it's going to be over some silly crap. How about when his friends asked him how he'd rank his wife's looks from a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being Beyonce, and he said 8? Well, that was his honest answer, but that's not the answer he should give at his wedding with a television camera in his face. He did catch himself and correct his answer to a 10, but it was too late. We can't unhear that. But then when they pose the scenario, what if your wife says we can do whatever you want to do tonight? What would you say? And he said, get on your knees. Now, it wasn't clear if he was trying to go Fifty Shades of Grey or if he wanted to even out their height difference or wanted her to scrub the floor. Either way, Aries, that's an answer you give when you're at the club with your boys and talking about some random woman you just bought a drink for. Not your new wife with her father, who's a pastor, by the way, sitting six feet away. Anyway, speaking of her being a preacher's kid, she was on After Party and said her childhood pastor married her an heiress. She asked her dad, but he declined because he wanted to be the dad that day, he said. I wonder if he really felt that way or if he had a problem with this type of marriage going against how the Bible defines marriage. He was probably like, you heathens need to leave me out of this mess. On After Party, she also said that she, her mom and sister have matching tattoos and they say fearless. I would definitely say that tattoo is accurate, Miss Mary to first sight, because you really have to kick fear upside the head to walk down that aisle. Now at the reception, it looked like they were all getting their party on, having a good time. On after party, she told Keisha that she didn't talk very much with Eris's people, but of the ones she spoke to, she judged the most with Eris's mom because she's truly a beautiful soul. So it sounds like he was raised by a good mom at least. We'll see how much of that goodness has rubbed off on him. And when it came to Gina and Clint, she definitely carried on too much about her work and her construction project. Gina, save the drywall and up flush toilet talk for later and get to know this man, sweetheart. Because like Whoopi Goldberg said, Gina, you in danger, girl. Clint is not who he seems. Clint was in full audition mode, whipping out the answers everyone wanted to hear at the wedding. Chow, you ain't full of nobody. We've seen the previews. You're about to be the drama king. Now, Kirsten and Shaq. Kirsten had the nerve to say to the confessional cam, In the past, I used to be particular and very picky. Past? Okay, if by past you mean six minutes ago. You just said he had two strikes for having a bald head and being younger than you. Plus... Since he didn't ask to kiss you, you gave him the cheek. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're still particular and picky, Miss Thing. When everyone was clanking their glasses for them to kiss at the reception and she wouldn't do it, I'm so glad Shaq picked up on the fact that there's a reason why she's fighting the kiss. But knowing that, I don't understand why he went for the old Chippendales dance after removing her garter belt. I know she don't want to kiss me, but let me give her a little razzle-dazzle by rubbing my crotch up and down her wet dress. Yeah, you like it when daddy does that, don't you, girl? No, no, she doesn't. 
I mean, he's super positive, but I don't want his little feelings to get hurt and blindsided by her club girl ways because she's still treating him like some annoying dude who's chasing her down to get her phone number. But she does seem to be relaxing a little bit and paying attention to his personality and the things they have in common rather than focusing on his bald head that she doesn't like, which is a good thing. Now, he was on After Party and said he was okay with the fact that she wasn't attracted to his bald head because he's proud of his head. He said, on paper, they look good and attraction will grow. Okay, kudos to you for keeping a positive, Shaq. So far, he seems to have the right attitude to be on the show because they do need to be prepared for their spouses not finding them attractive. And he seems to be going with it. I don't have much to say about Nicole and Chris yet. Of all the couples, they seem to have the best chemistry so far. I really like how open they are to the process and Nicole is just oozing positivity for now anyway. You know who they remind me of? They're like the couple you see at Costco feeding each other free samples. Then later you see her pressing a few shirts up against his chest and says, I think that would look cute on you, babe. They feel like the most normal or well-matched so far. I think they're gonna be the couple to watch in terms of having a chance of making it long-term. As for Dominique and McKinley, First of all, on After Party, Keisha pointed out how much Dominique's stepdad looks like McKinley. They do kind of look like they're related. McKinley said when he was standing at the altar waiting for the wedding to start, the stepdad wouldn't look at him, like wouldn't give him eye contact at all. Maybe he was not on board with her mama trying to marry her daughter off on a TV show to a man that looked just like him. Did you catch the part at the reception when Dominique was talking to McKinley's mom and sister? The mom was talking something about how she wasn't on board with the show. Then the sister said, yeah, it's like the olden days when they used to arrange marriages. Then Dom said, and they have a high success rate. Sounding like she was talking about married at first sight. Now, I don't know if she's a victim of deceptive editing and was talking about something else like the success rate of air fryers or birth control pills. Otherwise... I don't know what kind of research she didn't do, but their success rate is no better than going on a date with the Nigerian king who will give her $6 million for helping him cash a $3 billion check from Exxon. I'm just saying. And Dom's mom, being that she's the one who signed her 25-year-old daughter up for the show, I thought she could have been a little more positive and optimistic about McKinley. Instead of saying, yeah, he seems nice, but everybody that you meet's nice. Jeffrey Dahmer was nice. Was he though? Hmm. But why would you sign your child up for a show that you think might pair her with a serial killer? So they can make a movie out of your life or something? I don't get it. I really think they signed up for the wrong show. Dominic and her mom should have been on Smothered. That show where the mamas are too involved in their grown kids' lives. I could be wrong, but I get the feeling that her mom likes to be all up in her Kool-Aid or monster drink. Now, I thought it was bold of Dom to say to his mom, I want to be accepted for who I am. In other words, I hope you're not a racist. Girl, I get where you're coming from, but sometimes it's okay to sit back and observe. Trust me, it won't take long for a racist tiger to dig those claws in and show her stripes. Just relax and keep your eyes open. You'll find out one way or the other. On After Party, McKinley said he's dated mostly white and Latina women, but he didn't indicate a specific ethnicity on his application. He doesn't seem to be tripping on her being biracial at all. Now, he also said that his mom offered him $50,000 not to get married on the show. Now, mm, I've seen portions of old Married at First Sight contracts, and in them, they say if you quit the show early, you are subject to a $50,000 fine. Could it be that his mom said that if you want to pull out of doing the show, I'll pay the $50,000 fine? Because I think it's weird that his mom would offer him money not to do the show and too much of a coincidence that she would offer him the same exact amount as the fine. I'm guessing that he reworded that story for the sake of the show, not wanting the details of the contract to be public. And when it comes to the wedding, he said the person he gelled with the most on Dom's side of the family was her grandmother. Now, as much as her mama wants to be all up in their monster drinks, I thought it said a lot that he favored her grandmother. Uh Uh-oh. In any case, Married at First Sight, for the next seasons, can you please make the weddings and receptions one episode and fast forward to the honeymoon? Because that's where the personalities really start to rear their ugly heads. And we really get to see just how crazy these matches are. 
I believe the next episode is where everyone sits down with each other's friends and families for some one-on-one combos and the couples will learn where they're going on their honeymoons. In other words, it takes them almost a month to get to the good part. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next video.